Welcome back to my channel. This week I'm making these homemade fossils with my students. We're covering the geologic time scale and this is the perfect opportunity for a hands-on and fun way to get them excited and digging in to fossils. Like I said, this is very easy, not a lot of prep goes into this, but before we do this, I have a student go to the cafeteria, whether it's during our lunch or another grade level, and collect milk cartons, and I make them empty them out into the trash cans, and we just take a trash bag, and we collect a lot of these, because each student or each pair of students, however you wanna do this, could even be a group table, is gonna get one of these cartons, and of course we rinse them out. So you wanna do this a couple of days before you actually decide to create your fossils. So we rinse it out, I turn it upside down to dry on paper towels. And then the only thing else that we need to do, and your students can do this whenever we start the lab, is we need to cut the top off of the milk carton. So we just have the rectangular part of the carton. All right, so that's what it looks like, and now we're ready to go. We're going to be using plaster of Paris, and I always sit this in a bowl with a spoon. We've also got like a tongue depressor or a popsicle stick, whichever way you want to look at that. And these two things are great for stirring. The spoon helps them scoop the mixture, the plaster of Paris, into the container. And then I, we always use the popsicle stick to stir it around. And then I always have a solo cup with water at their desk. And we also have some sea seashells that we're gonna use to make our imprints for our fossils. Now, I will say this seashell with the ridges right here, the white one, that one makes great imprints and it's really easy to get out. Ones like this are beautiful and they can make a great fossil in an imprint, but they can also get stuck really easily. So kind of play around with it and just know that some are gonna work better than others. But a trick that I've learned is vegetable oil. Vegetable oil, if you spray it on the surface of those, is going to really help you get them out whenever your students are ready, and it'll keep them from getting stuck as often in your mixture. So that's all we need. Plaster of Paris, something to stir it with. We need a bowl to put it in. We've got our milk carton, vegetable oil, some shells, and we're ready to go. Okay, I wanna show you the steps of how you make this, and that is what we will end up with our finished end product. So I've got my milk carton, and I'm going to start by just spooning the plaster of Paris into the carton. And you can fill it however much you want, maybe a half, two thirds, all the way. Just depends on how much of the supplies you have. And I get my plaster of Paris at Lowe's. They have it at Walmart, but I like to go to Lowe's because they have a big 50 pound bag. And you can also get it on Amazon. I need to link it in the comments. Um, for one of my uh, school accounts, I can only buy online, and I have found it there, which is great. So I've got it about two thirds of the way full, and this mixture is definitely going to shrink down. So just know that it usually like at least cuts down by about half. So I'm gonna pour my water in, and the thing is we wanna make sure that when we pour the water in, that we pour in enough so that it's not concrete because if it's too thick, it's really hard to mix. And you can probably see, yeah, that kind of smoke that's rising and there's that reaction. And you wanna tell your students to make sure that they're getting all of the mixture broken up at the very bottom because if they don't, it won't really set down there. And you can kind of see. I always say it's like a um, thin to, I don't know. We don't want a thick pancake batter. I would say it's somewhere between thin and thick. 
is what we're looking for. And so you just tell your students, you really want to keep stirring and get all of the clumps out of it. And it's better for it to be a little bit too runny because you can always add spoonfuls of plaster into it. If it becomes too thick, sometimes it's so thick and it turns into concrete if students don't work it quickly enough. So let me see if I can show you guys what it looks like. See how it's... There we go. So that's about perfect. And I can kind of show you in there. So once students have that mixture, so you can see that it is still falling and dripping. Um, so it's a little bit runny, but not too much. That is when it is perfect and they can just smooth out the top inside their carton. And we're going to simply take the shell and we're going to coat it with our plaster of Paris. And you want to coat it pretty good. And we're just going to take that and we're going to make sure, I always tell students, don't push it down to where their ridges are below the top level because if you do that and you push it down all the way into there, it's going to get stuck and it's going to be really hard to get it out and then you won't be able to get it out. So we definitely want to coat it with some sort of oil and push it down in that way. So we want to make a good imprint, but we want to have it sticking above the surface with all the ridges. So you can see kind of looks like that. And students will simply let those dry. I usually do not take them out until the next day. And you can take the shells out, maybe give them a, an hour, two hours. You can pop out the shell, but we don't remove the box until the following day. And I'll let students tear apart the box. And you can usually do that over a trash can because it can get messy. But then at the very end of it, they will be left with these. So it does take a little bit of trial and error for the consistency, which is why I wanted to show you and making sure you can get the shells out. A pair of pliers can really come in handy with this lab, but we also take all of these fossils and we put them on exhibit in our library. Students then take them home and they love being able to show their parents what they've created in class. So I hope that you will do this with your students. You could even make one just in front of the class or have them if they wanted to do an extra credit project. These would be great instructions for them to create their own. Uh, but this is a lot of fun. It's a great way to uh, show students about fossils as you covered the geologic time scale. So I hope that this helped you. If you have any questions, don't forget to comment down below. And until next time, happy teaching, and I'll see you in the classroom.